A creme brulee is usually a dessert that's based on a custard. It gets sugar on top and then you torch it and then it creates this kind of like layer of crispy caramel. People, you know, they go with their spoons, they crack it. They love cracking it. Hi, I'm Fabian from Contra Wilder and Peoples and we're gonna make Wilder's creme brulee donuts. What we're gonna need to make this dough will be a stand mixer, some flour, sugar, salt, eggs, some yeast, milk, and a little bit of butter. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up our milk. So you just wanna make it a little bit warm just to dissolve the yeast so that when it rises, it just rises evenly and then just kind of whisk it so that you don't get lumps of yeast throughout your dough. So for this recipe, we use active dry yeast. You can use any kind of yeast, really. I think like active dry yeast just is a little kinder on the taste. It won't taste as fermented as other kinds. It's so easy to work with and you can really find it anywhere. So at this point, the milk's a little brownish. That means the yeast is well dissolved. So you can just take that out of the heat. This is basically a brioche dough, so it's kind of more a bread. And I always think when you're mixing those, you wanna think about layers because that's gonna be easier to mix. So what you can do and what I think helps is you can take some flour and then just put a little bit of the milk and yeast mixture and then just repeat that process maybe like three times. It's just gonna make your job easier when you're trying to mix everything up. We just wanna mix this until it's well incorporated. I would say always do it on speed two. You'll find the urge to go faster, but it's just gonna break your machine and that's not good. The difference between this dough and donut dough or even like a cake donut, you know, this has a lot of eggs and a lot of butter. It doesn't have a lot of sugar compared to other doughs that you'll see when making donut or other pastries. So I think this is quite forgiving. So when you see that the dough has come together like this, you can start adding your eggs. You wanna add them in stages just to give the dough a little bit of room to incorporate. You'll see how just like the slightest amount of moisture changes the dough entirely, but this is what we want. Okay, so at this point, uh, you'll see like the dough is kind of doing its own thing. It's like pulling away from the bowl a little bit. And this is a good moment to start adding your butter. And we can just add it, not too slow and not too fast. If we add it too fast, the dough is just gonna get really hot and it's gonna melt the butter and we don't want that. And then if you add it too slow, it's just gonna incorporate really slowly and then the dough is gonna get really hot itself. And then that's just gonna break the mixture. The butter is making the dough a little smoother. You want a dough that's really smooth and elastic. You don't want a dough that's kind of clumpy. We wanna work it to the point where it's gonna be stretchy enough, not too stretchy and not too dense. So you just wanna keep an eye on that. So if you can tell there's like this little thing the dough is doing where it's doing a whip, that's a good point where you can feel comfortable about putting the sugar and the salt in. At this point, our dough is fully incorporated. It looks a bit wet or sticky, but this is gonna sit overnight in the fridge. The butter is gonna solidify and it's gonna get us to a good point where we can roll it out and then punch it. You just wanna cover it with a little bit of plastic wrap so it doesn't dry up. So we'll just put it in the fridge and then we'll just let it rest for a little bit. So your dough's made, it's in the fridge, you're letting it rest overnight. And now we're gonna make the filling. We're just gonna separate our egg whites and our egg yolks. And then when you're doing this, you just kinda wanna set yourself up so that you can go on to the next task. So in this bowl, we're just gonna heat some of the milk. Cornstarch reacts mostly to heat. So you wanna make sure that you get your mixture to a high temperature enough that it's gonna make a nice, luscious pastry cream. If you don't heat it up enough, you're just gonna get like a loose, soupy thing. And that's not what we want. So the second thing you can do is take your vanilla beans. I just take the tip of the knife and then just kind of insert it and then run through it. And then you just split it. And you kind of wanna get the edge of the knife in there. And you wanna scrape it. You can just throw them in there. These guys, we're just gonna throw it into the pot. And then when we heat the milk, we're just gonna infuse a little bit of the flavor into it. So the next step 
You wanna take your cornstarch and wanna mix it up. This really helps when you're adding the milk, you'll know that the cornstarch is fully dissolved and it's not gonna clump up on you. We'll add a little bit of the sugar. And then you can just see how it's already slightly thicker just from adding the, the cornstarch. So the next thing, we just add our sugar into the pot. We wanna bring the milk to a simmer. You just wanna get the milk hot enough to temper in the, the egg yolks. So now that it's hot, we can just take some of it and just add it to this. And this is just kind of incorporating everything. Once we add this to the other milk, it'll just be easier for us to make sure that when we cook this, it doesn't get lumpy or anything. You just wanna take your mixture and then throw it again into the rest of the milk. Make sure you scrape everything. All those little vanilla bits are still there. So we're gonna return this to the heat. A lot of times when you cook a mixture like this and you don't heat it to a temperature high enough, the cornstarch will, will start like decaying overnight and then it'll become soup. So we just wanna make sure that we get it hot enough. And one thing that really helps when doing this is just wanna whisk it constantly just to make sure that it's all at the same temperature. And then you also just wanna check the texture of it. And as it's getting hotter, you can tell that it's getting thicker. That's always a good sign with this. So this has been cooking for a couple of minutes. It's gotten to the texture we want it. And then we just wanna strain it into a new bowl just to make sure that if there's any clumping of the cornstarch, we get a smooth texture. After this, we just wanna let it cool for a little bit. So we've given this a couple of minutes and we can start adding our butter. You just wanna add your butter slowly. You'll see at this point, the pastry cream is gonna start getting looser again. That's just because you're adding extra moisture, but don't worry about it. Once you let it sit in the fridge a little bit, the butter is gonna turn back into a solid and then we're gonna get the texture we want. So now that it's getting fully incorporated, we'll just cover it with plastic and then we'll throw it in the fridge. The dough has rested overnight. It should be solid and it shouldn't be greasy. So you just wanna dust your surface with a little bit of flour. Don't be afraid to use the flour, you can just brush it out later. And you'll take your dough, make the shape that you want it to roll into. Take your rolling pin. We wanna roll it out to be half inch thick for the donuts to kind of rise, I would say like four times that. So the dough is of the thickness you want it. It's better to use a metal cutter just to make sure that it goes through the dough and get a nice shape. Just try to get as many as you can. Just put them on top of a parchment paper covered tray. You just wanna give them space to have room to grow. So you can just cover them with plastic. We'll just give these a little time. So our pastry cream's made. We've given the donuts a little time to proof. We'll just need some oil at three, higher than 350, let's say. The dough is super soft now. So just take a knife and cut the parchment paper into manageable size. So you just wanna drop it gently. The dough has kept this moisture, so it's gonna puff up when we fry it. Just wanna give it a little time for it to fry on one side and then the other. What I think it's interesting about donuts, they're more like pastries. I mean, it's not a blank canvas, it's a donut, but you can um, do whatever you want with it, really. You have the filling, you have the glaze. I mean, the dough, you can even play around with it a little bit. You can add different spices or different things to the dough. The interesting thing about cooking is always connecting those dots that like, you know, connect you to different memories. When we were thinking about this, we are like, what are the things about creme brulee, like the custardy inside and then the shell? I mean, every single time you go out to eat with people and you get a creme brulee and everyone's like, you know, smashing the crust. I'm like, okay, so how can we do that? So yeah, you just want a golden brown all throughout. I think a beautiful donut is when it's golden brown on both sides and then you kind of have that little bit in the middle that's pale. And then that means to me that the dough is still kind of doughy inside and kind of stretchy, a little gooey, and then on the outside is just super crunchy. The crust is, it's like super crusty and it's gonna have a nice bite to it. That's because this dough is more of a bread than a pastry dough. I think this is a nice donut. It's golden brown, both sides. It's got that nice edge. You can tell that that's perfectly cooked. We're gonna fill them with pastry cream. But before that, we're gonna take some of this mixture of sugars. There's some isomalt here, some sucrose. And we're just gonna dust the donuts with it. 
we're gonna bake them at really high temperature so that it creates a shell that's not too thick, but it's thick enough that it'll get the effect that we want. If you're at home, you can just dust them with like a thick layer of powdered sugar, whatever you have, and then we'll put it in an oven at 400 degrees. You take it out of the oven and then you see that it has a shell on it already, but we just kind of want to build on top of that. So we'll just dust them again and we'll repeat this process. So we'll just put it in the oven for another 20 seconds. That should be ready. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but it has like a nice shell. We're just gonna let them cool down just so that the sugar crystallizes. You wanna make sure that the donuts are cold when you fill them because there's so much butter, so much fat in the pastry cream that we don't wanna fill them while they're still hot. We'll fill them in a little bit. So we have our donuts that are fried. We've had the crispy shell from the caramel. Our pastry cream has been cooling in the fridge for a bit. And so we're gonna take a pastry bag and then you just wanna cut. Get one of these fancy tips for, to fill donuts. Get a container like this. You can get like a water glass or something. Just put your pastry bag in there. Take your pastry cream. You wanna fill your pastry bag. Don't overfill it. You can always fill it again, but it's you just want to put the right amount so that it's easy for you to work with. Just take something that you can poke a hole through the donut and then just kind of move it around. And then you're kind of creating a cavity so that the pastry cream can go into. So now you'll just take your pastry cream and then you'll fill the donut. When you're filling the donut, just make sure that the donut becomes heavy. The whole point about making this dough and making sure it's fried properly is so that we have enough space that we actually want the donut to be quite full. And I think that's what makes this donut special. I think a good sign is when you see the little creams coming out. That's how you know. After you're done with everything, just kind of give yourself some time with your donut. Hear the cracking of the sugar. Kind of like go into it if you want. And then you'll see the nice vanilla cream, the crispy shell. The dough is super like elastic, doughy, and that's exactly what you want. And yeah, it tastes exactly like a creme brulee. The vanilla pastry cream, the crispy caramel shell, and then you've made this amazing dough that's just kind of carrying everything throughout. I honestly would say this is better than creme brulee because you're kind of just getting everything all at once. You're getting the crispy caramel, you're getting the delicious vanilla pastry cream, and then the dough is just like super tasty to me. So for the recipe, just click the link below, uh, come visit us at Wilder, and come have some donuts. Every donut should be its own thing. So if they're a little different thickness or whatever, like just let it be. It's nice when they all look a little bit different. You made it, like your hands made it. I kind of like that. <laughs>